Okay guys, uh, this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to change the thermal paste on your PlayStation 3 console. Um, the reason why you want to change it is, well, Sony really doesn't do a good job of applying this stuff and it doesn't look like it's very good quality. So, if you want to prolong the life of your PlayStation 3 and prevent it from overheating, I highly recommend you change the thermal compound. Um, the other thing is, it doesn't matter which compound you use, you should be replacing it around like every eight years, depending on the kind. Uh, so yeah, this is like just standard maintenance that most consoles should undergo. All right, so let's begin. Uh, things you're gonna need for this. You're gonna need some rubbing alcohol, you're gonna need a paper towel or, or some kind of towel to wipe the stuff off. Um, it doesn't really matter what kind of towel you use too much, as long as you don't leave any uh, strands or pieces on the chip or the cooling section, you'll be fine. All right, so let's proceed with cleaning off the old stuff. It's pretty straightforward, just do your best to get it off. Once you got the paste off the GPU and the CPU, you could move on to clean the heatsink fan. Same process as before, just get a paper towel, some alcohol and start rubbing at it. Okay, now that we have the contacts on the heatsink and the motherboard clean, let's put on the faceplate onto our heatsink. Now you may or may not need to do this, depending on how you disassemble your PS3 and for what purposes, but I did a pretty much complete disassembly, so I'm going to have to do this. There are two little screws that hold the faceplate to the heatsink. One here, and one right here. So you'll need a small Phillips screwdriver for this. Once you got this attached, I recommend giving this one last wipe with the alcohol and the towel, just to make sure it's nice and clean. And now you could go on to the final step, which is applying the paste and putting this whole thing together. Okay, I actually forgot to press record when I was applying this Arctic Silver here to the chips, but it's pretty simple. Just put them in the center and let me zoom in to show you about how much you need. About that much Arctic Silver will be enough for the chips. Um, you don't want to put too much, that's not good. You want to put just enough. And I've seen other videos where guys uh, use cards to flatten out the, the thermal paste or whatever to spread it out. That's not a good idea. 
Like I've seen uh, tests where uh, people have used the card method and different methods of application and putting like a piece size shape in the center and applying pressure tends to be the best way to do this. So um, if you were wondering, do it like this. Okay, so now that the paste is on, let's see. Let's take the plate with the heat sink and try to get this thing on here. Okay, so the idea is to have all the holes line up. If you manage to do that, then your chip should be seated in the proper position. Now that the motherboard is seated, we're just going to put on the back plate and the brackets. So this goes on here like this. And we're gonna put in these little screws here with our Phillips screwdriver back into their into their places, um, indicated by these arrows right here. Okay, now for the brackets. Now this part is very important. You want to do it very carefully. You're going to put in the screws a little bit at a time. Just make sure everything lines up good. and to make sure you're applying the right amount of pressure. The idea here is to give enough pressure to make a good contact between the chip and the heat sink. Alright guys, at this point I'm going to conclude my PS3 thermal compound tutorial and if you need any more assistance in putting your PS3 back together, please watch my PS3 disassembly video. Thank you for watching and if this video helped you, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe for more like it.